You smell that in That's arrogance coming back to the world of hobby Q&A. You're on the table with the main man again, Holy Diver. What we're going to do is we're going to go through our shopping list. We're going to get these orcs painted, and then we're going to get them onto that multi-base, because that's what it's all about, having a painted army. So we're to our shopping list. We're going to start off with our bone colors. We're going to use Rakarth Flesh for the base, Menoth White for the, for the uh, highlight on that. Our reds will be consisting of Mephiston and Evil Sun Scarlet. Our fleshes. Um, we're going to be using Bugman's Glow and Dwarf Flesh. Our Orc Flesh will be consisting of Wall Flesh, War Boss Green, the Beal Tan Green, highlighted again as needed with War Boss Green. Our greys are coming in to focus here. We got Old Reliable Codex Grey. Um, this is just Dove Grey. As you can see, I have a lot of this in my heyday for uh, painting orcs. I painted over 40 boar riders when I had my original army, and I went through a lot of this stuff, so I just decided to buy it in a bulk container. You can add just faucet water to keep that nice and thin. Um, Urathon Grey for the highlight. But that's, uh, oh, and on the uh, wash for that, this is, uh, this wash is actually applied after the first two shades. Our browns consist of base coat, bestial brown. Highlight snake bite leather. This is what we use uh, black gray on the hoods of the great pigs. Our metals will consist of lead belcher and mithril silver. And the last wash that we're going to be using is the strong tone shade. This will go all over our bones, our leather not to mention our woods and stick parts and leather straps that these guys got on them and that's pretty much by and large the shopping list for the orcs so for the purposes of time we've already gone through and started our miniature um, we're gonna be coming to this uh, this phase we're gonna wash the uh, fur the door here with uh, the uh, model wash from Vallejo and basically this mixture is two drops of the model wash two drops of water and um, it doesn't take much to apply it I'm just gonna come over here I'm gonna make sure it's mixed up though there we go and you just go down and you run it in a very light layer and it basically uh, you don't let it pull up into too many places you see how far that one little drop is going just see where it's all I mean I'm already halfway done with one face of the pig don't let it get too wet inside of the miniature a little bit goes a long way like I said you only need two drops to basically cover the hide of the great beast here I mean I'm already almost done with one whole side I'm just gonna grab a little bit more of this here wipe off what we don't need make sure we get up on the top of the mohawks for the pigs here we're just going to make sure it gets on any place that we can see, even on the goatee of the pig. We'll go down. And there we go. Anyway, that's the wash. And uh, the first steps were a dry brush of the wall flesh. So that color is basically done. And I brushed it on very lightly with a big old flat brush like this. Next. Same thing, Warboss Green was brushed on with a big old flat brush like this. And then, Codex Gray came on with the same size brush. Then, our um, Dove Gray 
uh, this also came on with a big flat brush. Then we washed the flesh of the orc with the beel tan. Now we're washing the skin of the pig or the fur of the pig with the water wash mixture because we're only going to apply one more color to the pig and that's the uh, urethon gray and when you're done I'll give you a picture of what that looks like when you're done with the final highlight it really it'll really pop the miniature one color so we'll be back after, when we get to the next step so after we highlight it our fur will look like this very very bright uh, grayish white here it'll look exactly like this once we're done um, you can actually shade up to white if you wanted to through this mixture It's something I highly recommend for uh, white fur and everything but yeah this is what the fur will look like once it's done and uh, the wash is still kinda drying but that's what that's the effect that we're going for big old gray grayish white pigs So the good thing about model wash is that you never ever really ever have to wait too long for it to dry. So we're already moving on to our next color, which is our bestial brown. And this is where it gets kind of really easy. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to hurry up and we're going to paint the parts that I want to be brown, brown, and then we're going to highlight it with the snake bite. So these little fur boots here that he's got on his leggings, they're going to be brown. And then this is the fun part. You just get it on the shield just like that. Bam. Uh, all the straps on the shield, the leather that he's wearing around his waist, and everything. All of that can just go quick dry brush on and everything. We'll even use this as uh, the opening coat on his hair. But yeah, for the entire T of the model here, you're just going to use this as a dry brush because these shields are awesome, by the way, I might add. They're one of these are actually some of my favorite models that GW has ever put out are the Savage Boar Riders. There's uh, there's a reason why I bought another. Um, why I'm guilty of playing a solo on the Devil's Clarinet as far as buying GW products. They do make a good orc, and these Savages are definitely my favorite models, hands down. Savage orcs, best models they ever created. Um, like everybody's all about those. Primary Space Marines, fuck that shit. These things, some of the best models I've ever seen. And then, uh, not to mention, on the leather straps, we're going to just put a quick dry brush down. You see he's got these leather straps running, a running along his uh, skulls here. And you can get this on the skulls too. And everything, that's okay. Because uh, we're going to be doing the same kind of dry brushing with the snake bite there. And then, um, let's see, let's finish the top part of his shield in here. But I'm going to need a lot for that. Anyway, you got a lot of angles to work with. But as you can see, I'm just making sure I get the leather parts to be leather. And um, seeing as how we already washed the flesh, when we uh, wash our... Uh, our bu when we wash everything with the strong tone, we'll just be able to highlight down and away from the leather parts here and everything and that that'll throw up our skin one color same with the bone get a little bit on the bone build a base for your bone build a base for the nails and then this part up here is going to be metal anyway but yeah just build a base for your bone very very light brush around the bone get some on the teeth get a little bit in the mouth because we're going to be painting the um, the tongue red and uh, that's what you do with the with the bestial brown so we're gonna oh, not to mention we're going to get a little bit in the mouth here and just uh, bring that up one color just because you can't really see a lot and this also provides a little bit of a disgusting brownish color for your bone as well so you don't need a lot but you just get it on the uh, the tusks and stuff the big parts that you can see and then that's basically it with this color we'll be back alright so now that we got our brown on the trade secret here is you want to highlight the leather straps along the bone now along where the bone is going to be now before putting your foundation before going to the second shade on your bone I mean the first shade on your bone so we're just gonna take a little bit of snake bite get another little brush here and we're just going to take a little wipe off what we don't need 
and we're just going to get in the center there. And don't be afraid to put this on your bone too. There we go. And then the wash will do its job when you put it on there. And then you can start to take this color onto your shield, onto the rest of your leather. Um, so again, we're just going to be quickly highlighting, and this is just a very, very good speed combination for your for your orcs, for your savages, and everything. It's just very quick, very painless. You can get a lot of these guys really quick. I've already painted five, and and that's one hour per guy, roughly. One hour per guy. I'm just, of course, this is going to take me a little bit longer because I'm explaining the steps of how I did it, but um, I painted one man every single day this week, up today, and this guy, it's not Saturday, so yeah, I've got five sitting over there. This guy's number six. I have just banner guy, and that's it. So we're just going to hurry up and just see how you can see the black down there on that shield and everything. That makes a nice effect. So we're going to hurry up, finish off the leather, and we'll be back. So now that our leather's been highlighted and everything, and everything's just going good with that, we're on to our next color, which is the base for all the bone. This is all tooth and claw, and then not to mention this is all of the tusks and everything like that, not to mention the skulls along his chest and everything, the uh, bone on his sword. And then um, before we get there though to the mouth, we always want to put the mercury in the mouths of the pigs. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off uh, right now. Um, so I guess that this is technically the next step, but you always just want to paint the brightest color in there first and just get it in there on the tongue on the happy little tongue. Once you wash it, you're not going to be able to see a lot of that mouth. And then the same is also true of the pig, because the pig, this is about the only part of the pig that you see from across the table, is right here. You don't see into the mouth. Nobody's looking for tattoos on the tongue. If somebody's looking for tattoos on the tongue, oh, I'm, I'm disappointing them right now. <laughs> and, I'm, and I don't do tattoos on my works. I want my works done. I want a, I want a, I want a brand new Insta unit there we go. So you got that on there. You just hurry up and get your tongue done. And then when you're, when you're very done, when you're done washing and everything, you just put a drop on the Atmos part that you can see with the highlight there on that. So tongue's done. Don't think I have to show you what goes on next here, but we're going to get a little bit out. Take a nice brush here. Start with the rack arth. Boom. And see here. There we go. Uh, there we go. And then I always go on the tusks one direction. So I'm going to take a look at the other side here. I'm going to start with this side. I'm going to go in just one direction, kind of just following the wet edge of the brush. And then for the skulls, we'll have to change our brush, but we can go around the outside and start highlighting the uh, bone on here because we're going to need, we're not going to really go in between. There's no point for that. But yeah, we're just going to go very lightly around where the leather straps are so that they stay leather and that there's a clear separation. And then, of course, we start our sword and everything and we do our teeth up. And that's bone. So again, I've taken the liberty of just uh, hurry up. I put the bone in there. I made this red, and I made the boss of the shield red. Well, this will change slightly when we get to metallics, but you know, you know how to put red paint on, or at least I hope you know how to put red paint on. The next phase that we're going to go to is we're going to do the pig flesh on the face, and we start that off with our bugman's glow. Um, very thin layer of it. As a matter of fact, yeah, that's good stuff right there. Um, I used to use this on human on humans, but I found that if you use it on people, you have to really, really, really thin a lot of it down because just a little of this stuff um, 
it can go a long way, like really bad. It, you can clog your detail on faces really fast. Now if you just want to put a quick dry brush of this stuff on a face real quick for a human being, that's it, and have that be your, and do a soft tone wash over it, you're done. You're, you're literally done. That's all you need to do is a soft tone wash on this and you're just done. Just the base and the wash. You don't, because this this stuff is just so, 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 so thick and you don't need a lot of it, but it works perfect for pigs. Like, this is the recipe for pig flesh. This also works really good on ogres. If you're speed painting ogres, um, you don't even need to use it. You just spray paint your ogres flesh and then paint their pants black, wash them after you've done metallics and, and details, and then that's it. Ogres, done. You probably do five in a night when you're just fucking around watching Dracula or something. But yeah, that's the pig flesh. You don't need a lot. Um, let's go off frame here for just a second. Again, I, I barely tap it in there. And it just starts to cover it and everything. Get our ears, our little pig ears. I just love pigs. These are pig raiders. I don't know. I just, um, this is le legitimately, again, my, my jam is orcs. I like orcs and, you know, seeing as how my uh, army's GW, it might as well stay that way. I mean, it's not to say that I won't do a magic army um, of orcs if uh, I got them used for a good price, but buying a new army, no. The only new army I'm going to be buying are my Abyssal Dwarves, and I think that's going to be the end. Once I re re revamp the undead and everything, once I revamp the undead, uh, that'll be pretty much it for my Kings of War armies, because right now I'm in a debate whether or not I get more trolls for my uh, Goblin army, and it's like, do I want to bring three hordes of goblins, or do I want to bring goblin cavalry that I have painted already? Um, I only have to paint six models for those three hordes, mind you, but just, I, I'm debating, because, you know, brute force is a good thing. Don't get me wrong, brute force in an army is an awesome thing. Let's uh, not stop, we'll just go right through to the next color here. And, uh, lo and behold, it's metallic. Alright, um, but this is a really good speed formula. Um, again, I just, uh, this is just how I've painted, I've painted up so many of these guys, I, I can really just paint them up like I'm ordering a pizza, literally. Um, once you, painting orcs is by and large in my blood at this point, by and large. Um, in my blood, very it comes very naturally to me because you, if you've painted a model forty times and then you go and you paint a model seven more times, you don't really forget it. And so what we're going to do with our metallic here on the boss of the shield is um, I don't know how well you'll see. Oh, we went off frame. I went off frame. Holy diver went off frame. Because we're just going to circle the boss of the shield with the metallic and then we'll paint more red in between to highlight the red but yeah we're just doing the boss of the shield get that done sword very easy don't need to do a lot on that just hey I'm gonna have to actually switch brushes because we're gonna go down here with our sword and then you won't have to highlight that portion at least Ugh. went to the dentist today none of the girls were cute and I don't know what happened um, last time I went to the dentist, all of the girls were like, bad bitches, bangable bitches, and now they're just all like, cold showers, every single fucking one of them, wow. <laughs> what the hell happened to you? <laughs> oh, and even I fucked up right there. Forgot to paint the bone right here. But that's okay, we'll hurry up and do the metallics down towards the hilt of the sword. And work away from the hilt. A lot of times, you work away from things when you're painting. Instead of go going directly on top of things, you work away from them. Let's see here. Uh, other side. Yeah, there we go. And 
had to probably there. Now we'll paint the other side of the sword. And not a lot of metallics on this. That's it's always good, you know. Just just two foundations and a layer. Really good stuff. I could go a third color, but I want my orcs to be darker. So that's why I don't generally go beyond the war boss phase. Um, yeah, the war boss green phase. So let's see here. We're just going to... And I'm going to be ordering a desk clamp soon. But most of my... But as far as like buying new armies, I think I'm done once once I redo my undead. I'm, I'm just going to be adding units to my undead. I'm going to probably add about a thousand points worth of units. A horde of skeletal spearmen, um, three troops of ghouls, uh, maybe another horde of zombies. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it'll be, yeah, so roughly, you know, they're going to be multi-based and everything and they're just going to be really easy to use and everything and then I'm going to be adding some mantic werewolves because I would like my entire army to be uh yes I'm re I'm retiring the werewolves of badberg you know so that I have full three a full three painted mantic armies that uh you know and it looks like I did my job and I went out and I bought some mantic stuff um let's see next color we're going to we're going to phone in here is the um menoth white and then we're going to Let's just do the men off white real quick, and this is going to be be self-explanatory because this is this is a good shutdown point because I got a lot of angles I got to work in now. What we're going to do is we're going to paint away from the green here, and then when we highlight the green again after we've washed it, that'll give us the effect of the that'll give us a really good lift on the bone. It'll go psh, that'll be the catch point for the eyes right there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go very gently away from it very healthy coat here all the way down even then I gotta watch myself and you do that to the other side but then you uh, also want to work away from the leather strap so you, you you do use a small brush for this the entire time um, but again same principle on the other side Let's see I don't Same principle. I think I should have raised the camera another two inches or something. I'm, I'm always fiddling and fussing, but it's probably fine. So I'll work away from the leather strap. And now we're ready to work our way down. Bam. And you get that milky white skull thing. And you let a little bit of that uh, leather brown poke out. You just, again, you go all the way down. And then you do tooth, claw, the rest of the bone, and then we'll be going to pig flesh. So we're to the um, pig flesh part again. We're going to use dwarf flesh to highlight it. As you can see, we've highlighted all of our bone. Um, and uh, we've also taken a little bit of gray wherever it got way too dark, just to uh, build the base up again. Um, just wherever it got way too dark and it pulled and I didn't notice it. Uh, so you, uh, we went down around the toes, we went on the claws, we went on the hilt of the sword. We're almost ready uh, to highlight again because when you highlight again you're just going to use snake bite and men off on the bone pieces as needed. So let's get into our pig flesh. Mm. I'll eat my paint here. There we go. Because again, this is one color I usually keep very, very thin. There we go. And dwarf flesh is just one of those colors that's actually all the way good. Um, you could base coat dwarf flesh and then wash with flesh wash and then ba do do it again. And you actually have a decent flesh tone. But again, this is it's very thick. If you've seen my Romans video, I don't know. I used this on some of my cavalry, and it it was kind of with some hideous results, in my opinion. Like it can clog detail on a man's face very, very easily. 
and it's just so thick it's bad. So as we go around our uh, pig face here, pig face, um, just gonna pick out the parts and portions. Get underneath, make sure it's all snouty. And when you wash this, hopefully you you get just you get it on even enough that you don't have to re-highlight it. Let's see here. I want to switch brushes real quick. I don't even quite get clean. It's dragon. We might have to dip it in the uh, paint thinner. Clean it one more time. No, oh, that's much better. Around the pig face, the lips. You know, I see people painting these days, and they they treat it like it's some kind of a fucking science. Since when did it when did it become science? I thought this was supposed to be a relaxing endeavor. Now it's fucking work. God, they got like they got rubber gloves. They got like special handles. They don't want to touch the miniature while painting. They don't even get paint on their hands. It's just they look like half-ass astronauts going to paint miniatures now. I understand it's different when you airbrush, of course, but like, damn, people take it seriously. They take it seriously, and of course you want things to look good, but if things look too good, you don't get anything done. And <laughs> for what gets shit done, you have no idea. You know, you can burn yourself, if you try to do too much, you can burn yourself out on a project faster than Lakeity Splitsville. And, you know, that's one thing, I, that's why I always just sort of go to one standard with my armies, and then I, I use, the, the problem with me and mantelpieces and uh, uh, display case quality miniatures is that anything that I paint to that standard, I don't hang on to. Um, I, I sold my last crystal brush entry for like $350, and it was like seven shitty Rall Partha miniatures from the 1980s. It was just seven miniatures. Seven miniatures on a diorama. Sold it for $350. I think it was a little bit more than that. Because I gouged them on shipping, too. I'm like 50 bucks to ship it, or <laughs> something like that, but... Let's see, we've done our flesh, let's uh, highlight our silvers and our reds, and then we're ready for a strong tone wash. Let's see, there we go. Mm. Just do it. God, I'm having... This one. I apologize, I'm just not with it today, camera-wise. I think if I approach you a little bit more this way. I think I had it right the first time. Uh, just not with it. Went to the dentist today. Not with it. That's my excuse right there. I'll use that as an excuse. I'm going to go around the boss of the shield again. Piggy doesn't appear to have any uh, piercings, so we'll move on to red. And then this is right here. What we're going to do is we're going to take our evil suns. And when you wash this finally, this will actually look really good. So we've covered up most of our red, as you can see. So we're just going to go through and put our red back on. to be. And it can be completely random, it doesn't need to... This is just a very quick weathering effect, I mean it's not a lot of metal. Very simple, very easy to do. Let's say we're just about done. 
Use this Evil Sun Scarlet on the hair. We'll also be doing our eyes in Evil Sun Scarlet. So, yeah, we, you can see what I'm doing to the hair. We're just going to brush it up. And this is pretty much the end of our red. Whipped him out faster than anticipated, even doing this video. I don't know how good it's going to be. I apologize in advance. I can't do everything on my own, I've noticed. You know, that's the only problem being where I live, is that people will not help you. And if they help you, they expect to get, they expect to get paid. You know? I mean, eat... It's funny, even for like battle reports, or they just don't, or they have to go and get light bulbs and that ruins their whole day. I don't expect anybody to help me anyway. I just do this for the love, but still. I need to be paid. No, I'm like, whatever. I'm just me on my own. So if I save my money, I can either get, I could probably get a new camera and computer this year. It's, that's why I'm not doing a lot of armies. Going around the tongue again. We're going to hit that tongue one more time. In the pig's mouth. Just at the brightest part. That's the hardest part of battle reporting and making videos and making content. Is that you, when you're alone in it, it's just, it's just difficult to want to work sometimes. But I, I, I want to work. Unlike a lot of people, I want to work. I kind of, uh, this isn't my lifestyle, but I enjoy doing it. And that's why I make it. That's why I make things happen. Where's my men off? I hooked up the pig teeth. And if you can see it, like the base of the pig teeth is just brown. But I'm just edge highlighting the front of the tusks. There we go. I'm going to do banner guy last. We're going to work all, all through the night to get this unit done. So we are finally to the strong tone wash. And there is a way to do this. You shake your strong tone wash really good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. And one. Two, three, four, or look at that. Don't quite have enough. There we go. About five drops. So you have that amount right there. And then one, two. When I washed the orc flesh itself, I just haphazardly did it all. So it was one big wash that went over the orc flesh. And so when I highlight, and after this wash and everything, um, his flesh is going to be very bright. Uh, it's going to be bright, but still dark. It's only going to be bright in the high areas, naturally. But yeah, that's the problem with me and... Uh, me and display case models, we don't last that long. I just like... Because by the time I complete a project, like if I do something up that's really, really nice, takes me forever, and I do one master class model, I don't want to look at it anymore. I don't want to look at anything nice that I do. Um, so that's usually what happens is that I don't want to look at the project anymore. And I end up just getting rid of it anyway. So it's like, why go through the effort? Now I could see if your army was a, uh, what do you call it? Just 19 models and it was uh, those priest marines. I don't know what the fuck they're called anymore. Like, oh fuck, that, that's going to kill me here. But we're just putting this all over the bone, all over the pig flesh. It's going on the tusks. And anywhere it pulls up, just draw from it and put it somewhere else. You don't want to wash your pig fur with this because it'll turn your fur brown. Make sure you definitely get it along the sides here. Get it on his booties, his little uh, leggings things. Drag it along the toes. And it's okay if you get it on the flesh in that instance. His feet are supposed to be dirty anyway. 
plus you're going to be highlighting the green one more time as needed to clean everything up of course and then I know that there's metal sitting there right right through there but we're just going to wash that off anyway because we're going to go back over it with a different color for the final highlight on the wood and it's just basically going to cover a lot of the miniature really quickly and we're going to have to go off camera here to get the leather straps in his mouth and everything but no something I enjoy doing is making these videos and for once I seem to be staying in frame for the whole video during the fun part this is the fun part it's the relaxing part you know but like yeah so I don't get the whole science behind painting and everything yeah you can do all that but is it I, I guess it's worth it if you only own one army you see I don't own one army I own several armies I guess that's what denotes a professional war gamer from an indie gamer or a hipster a hipster might only own like uh, an infinity faction a Malifaux faction and let's say a hordes faction he won't own any armies and none of what he has will be painted that well it'll be painted well but you know It'll be for games that no one plays in my open. No, I'm just kidding. I'm talking shit now. I should call my hotline if I want to talk more shit. Four ninety nine a minute. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the difference there. Is that you know, to me, you have to have armies painted, not just a couple of guys. You know, not just a forty k army. And how many models are really in a forty k army these days anyway? Like seventy. You get 70 plus marines with vehicles, maybe, and a big one. Let's think. My salamanders had 30 marines, 10 terminators, and what else did the salamanders seem to have? Vehicles, like five vehicles, some speeders, some bikes, whereas like Orcs, that's an army. You do 40k orcs, that's an army. You're painting in excess of at least 60 boys. Maybe 30 to 60 boys. Can't have an orc army without boys. You know, so if you paint about 70 models in a space marine army, I guess that counts because a good elf count was... A good, uh, a good army in fantasy back in the day was about 70 to 105 models. Back when unit strength mattered, I actually used to think about how many goblins I'd take and everything. And do. All right. We'll we'll come back as soon as I'm done. I gotta. I have to actually take a smaller brush and do the eye patch with the wash. All right, so we're back. You can see our uh, guys all nice and dry. We got some dry brush colors that we got to do and everything. So we're gonna get to that. Let's uh, get our wood here. So this is the final color, the vomit brown, and that's what cracks the wood. And then let's see here. I'm short of color. And this is what highlights the pig fur, the urethon gray. But before we get there, what we're going to do is we're going to take our War Boss Green and we're going to layer up our flesh on the highlight areas. So, a couple areas that we want to start off with and be careful in. Here is uh, right by the skulls, the, the bones right here. So what we're going to do, just going to get a little bit right there. Start and we're just going to pull away. Make it nice and clean. The cleaner you get it around the bone, the more his muscles will stack. And we like our orcs to look stacked, don't we? Absolutely. So let's just get his inner thigh. Come down. And then we'll actually be able to switch to a standard brush. But this is also, when you wipe most of that off, you can start to highlight the face, like the upper lips and everything, like I'm doing right here. In the mouth. 
a very important part. Make the work face nice and bright because we've already done our wash phase and everything, so. Lips. Whew, I'm tired. I'm really trying to push this unit out as fast as I can. Played a game today as well. That's why there's that's why it seems so weird that I've just come back and everything. I want to just pull down and away from the eye patch. Go one more time on the lip. Anyway, we're going to just do this little final area. I'll go off camera and finish up real quick. Pull away from the bones. And clean up along the edge of the leather strap so that's nice and green. So we'll be back. So next what we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, size 7 dry brush here, Windsor Newton, and uh, we're going to get our Urth on gray out finally. We're going to highlight the pig fur. As you can see Mr. Orkface is doing fine. We only have a few little details left, but this is like we're just in the highlighting phases, so we get quite fun. One of the things I like to do is I like to run it along the mohawk. So this is actually the fun part. This is just as for me, this is almost as much fun as washing the miniature. And I clearly can't talk, but we're just gonna go. Down and we're going to highlight. A little bit goes a long way. You don't need a lot. And you see what that does. It brings up our fur. We can get messy. Much or as little as you need. Too much on you, he's just wipe a little bit off on the rag. And go to the front just a little bit. I like that. I like where this is going. But you can see what this color does to the uh, to the two base coats app that you put on. You put the dove gray on, and then where it got too dark, you might just put a little bit more gray. But you see what this does, and it just really brings up the color on the fur, really pops. You can do the same thing with the browns and graveyard earth, but this was the color of all of my boars originally for the ones that were taken and everything. But this was this was the color I had selected for them. And um, I actually was painting Beast Men this color. I had one that I had done, and I had never gotten around to repainting Beast Men. And uh, they were all going to be albino. And I got this uh, color scheme from uh, that old movie, Princess Mononoke. But it, I'm a little bit of an anime fan of sorts, but you know, it was really more in like my childhood and everything when anime was first coming to the United States and. You'd be sitting there watching it, and your mom would. You, you'd be sitting there watching Vampire Hunter D on Stars, an encore. Your mom would walk into the room, and you'd quickly change the channel. And you're like, "What do you want? What I'm doing in here is private." She'd be like, "What's the matter? Nothing. What are you doing? Nothing." <laughs> you know, back when it was kind of grind. When any when anything Japan would send over would be like grindhouse style violence and tits. I actually owned the first two Devil Man animes that OVAs that came out, and every time I watched them, I felt like I was doing something wrong. That's when anime was cool. Now it's just 
Eh, shit, most of the time. Devil Man Crybaby was pretty cool, though. Really cool. And as you can see, you've got the fur on the pig. It's all done. All nice and highlighted. We can clean off our brush. We can crack the wood. And highlight our leggings. And then this miniature is done after we dot eyes. So, let's crack our wood real quick. We're going to take a medium dry brush here, the size 3 Windsor. And we're just going to wipe off most of it. And this is really cool what it does to the wood. Kind of puts like a yellowish hue to it. Ma'am, ma'am, thank you, ma'am. You can work it up and down, you can work it side to side. And if you really wanted to get ambitious, you can mix a little bit of bleach bone in there and just go along the edges with it. But since the shield, you're only gonna see I'm only gonna see this portion of the shield most of the time, you know. I mean, you're going to see this portion of the shield, so it's, it's really no point to doing that. You know, and I'm all about speed is the key with this kind of stuff. And it looks like I need to bring up the uh, color on my bone, too. So, now that I look at this model. And then we go to the snake bite. And that's going to require the detail brush again, because we got to go around the... the uh, the strap. As you can see here, he's got a leather strap right there that we got to go around again. Just hit his leather. His leather one more time. We'll go down here. These are leather too for some reason. That's just the way I've always done it. And gosh, I wish I still had my orc army, then I wouldn't be doing this, but then I wouldn't be making this video. But it, on, on the other hand, it's always fun because this is doing this is like ingrained in my muscle memory. It's kind of amazing how I just turn the light on and they're like, okay, we're painting orcs. All right, I'm going to need these colors. Let's do it. It's just, yep, it's just coming naturally to me to do this. One of the funnest things I've done in a long time is paint some of these old Citadel orcs. Get them all ready. Bringing them up to snuff, as I say. And anybody can learn this. This is this is still some pretty basic stuff, but it looks really good. I mean, it looks fantastic when you get it out there. We'll uh, we'll finish the uh, leather off screen, and we'll uh, be back. All right, so we're back. Let's uh, start highlighting our bleach bone again here, or our met using the Menoth white. And let's see here, how do I explain what I'm going to do here? Around the skulls, we're going to use the detail brush. I mean, the bones here, and we're just going to touch the edges. You know, like so. If we've got too much, you, if you think you've got too much on your brush, as usual, you probably do. And you don't really, and you pull away from the skin. Like so, and you'll just go to like make the top part of the skull. There we go. And that's basically the bone area. I kind of like the way the tusks look, but we can do an edge highlight as well. And then we come up here, we can just put a little bit on the ends here. Uh, do the fingernails right there one more time. You can't really see the fingernails there, so we'll just put a line down. Let's see. Oh, yeah, this is... But, you know, I mean, uh, people are, like, 
taken this to the next level, science and everything, with like gloves, airbrushes, uh, I don't know. To me, when I do a, when I do a mess, when I get to the end of a big project, and uh, on, especially on a high detail project, I can't even stand to look at it anymore. I just, I can't. The more time I, the more time I put in, the less likely I am to keep the project, and I just, I can't. It's like, I don't know what it is with me. Literally, I don't. Yeah, I need a different brush for that. Let's get this guy. I'd rather just get the work done and have a nice painted army on the table. Call it good. There we go. Oh no. Let's go back to our detail brush, dot our teeth. This guy's got big teeth. He's got a big, huge claw tooth right there. Get the tops. Bam. Yeah. Orcman. Coming at ya. Never hurts to have the dry brush just ready to go. I'm gonna have to go around here. Finish the hilt of our sword. People are like afraid to touch their miniatures now. I don't really care. The acid in my hand ain't gonna do shit. Just give your hands a good wash before you start. Although, if I had to start over, start over with no miniatures, zero miniatures. Let's just say I had a bunch of primed black miniatures and that was going to be the only army I'm allowed to have to my name. Then yes, I'd be doing tattoos on these guys. I'd be figuring out a way to multi-base all ten of them on the base with some diorama effects and that's where I'd stand on that. I'd do the whole bang at that point. So, as you can see, this is like the completed miniature. Um, we still got to dot one eye and the eyes on the pig with the red. But we're going around. You've got some decent muscle tone on the back. You've got a little bit of wear around the edges here with the red and everything. And um, this is the whole thing before he gets taken off here. And what I'm using is a Pepsi cap. That is a... I've been drinking Pepsi like crazy <laughs> in order to get the caps because I saw someone on Facebook using the Pepsi cap method here and I'm like oh my god that's a good idea a little bit of super glue and you've got it made now there are t tons of ways to do eyes for orcs and pigs I just like to do a simple little dot of red stands out you'll see it every single time some little dot of red there. Now he's just got one beady little eye. We're going to try to get as close to that eye as we can. And if I really, really wanted to be determined, I could put in the top portion of that eye a little yellow dot, which would make it pop even more. And I think he's going to get the yellow dot. And we're going to use. Signar yellow for that. But we gotta get a smaller brush. We're gonna use a 5 slash 0 to do that. There you go. We're probably gonna fuck up our miniature right here. Maybe. No, nope. just fine. Nobody's gonna notice it. No, better do it one more time. 
only problem with Signar Yellow that I have is that it coagulates. There we go. Now you can see it. Burning. He's the only one who's getting the special treatment. Not like anybody will notice anyway. But by and large, you might be wondering how I get him off of there if I super glued him. I just push up on the cap. Falls off every single time. Put the cap away over there into the corner for next time. And there's your miniature. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Well, there you have it. I hope this uh, tutorial on how to paint orc cavalry has helped you out in your uh, daily lives of making an orc army for uh, Kings of War or whatever it is you play. Um, this is a really good... Uh, stepping stone into different areas other than like humans or whatever. Um, I enjoy this project. Orcs are legitimately one of my most fa beloved races. Um, I'm orc crazy so I always seem to have a few green skins laying around that I can put some paint onto. Um, that's pretty like, you know, I mean, what I said, you know, I just, I, I, I don't know, I, I guess it's a quirk with me that when I do put too much time into a project, I am disgusted to look at it. And so, you know, I really, uh, what, what do I take away, what do you want to take away from this when I paint? Um, when I paint, I just want something done. I want to move on to the next project, and my goal this year is to have very minimal projects. I want to basically have a blister of guys, of eight guys, that I'm going to be working on, and that'll be all I do for the entire month, so that I can focus more on putting out better content on the internet rather than the projects that I have on my desk, if that makes sense. Anyway, as you know, YouTube has many features you can use to interact with me. You can like the video, dislike the video, comment, or subscribe. But until then, keep playing, keep fighting, and stay metal, my friends. Hey, internet, if you like these videos, there's a few simple things you can do for me to support this channel. You can always hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and share this video. That's as good as a $5 donation. Thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.